Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. This video is a compilation video in which I highlight my five favorite overlooked Google search tools. These are the search tools that Google offers that kids don't find when they just go to google.com. But that doesn't mean they're not very useful features, particularly for high school students. So in this video, you'll learn how to use Google Scholar, Google Books, Google's Public Data Explorer, Google's Data Set Search Tool, and Google's Fact Checker Tool. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe or check out freetechforteachers.com. Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm gonna show you five things that students should know about using Google Books. Let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm at books.google.com. And let's say I'm a student looking for a book about the War of 1812. So I'll do my search. And the first thing that students need to know is how to refine these results. So first of all, they can look for things that have any view, preview and full view, or full view. Now a full view book, a student can read in its entirety online. They can also download it for free or print it for free directly from Google Books. Let's select full view. Now they can also refine this search by publication type of book, magazine, or newspaper. Let's just say books for now. And we can further refine that to the date of publication. We can say 21st century, 20th, 19th century, or do a custom range of dates. Let's pick 20th century. Great, now we have our list of books and my student can now go ahead and read these books online. Let's just go ahead and open that in a new tab. And here the student can scroll through and read that entire book. Now, one of the neat things you can do and this is an important thing for students to know how to do, and that is to search within the book. Maybe they're looking for information about New Orleans. And now they can see every page in the book that references New Orleans, and they can jump to that page by just clicking on it, and they can read that section. Now, once you've landed on this section, there's more that you can do. In the upper right-hand corner, we have this more actions option. And from here, we can go in and we can share a little clip of this book and now make a selection of just that portion of the book and clip it. And they can copy that text. They can copy and image of the text itself or even copy an embed code to place that section of the book into a blog post or a web page somewhere else and exit out of that and now we can exit the selection mode so that's really handy now our student can also select the option to add to their own library as long as they're signed into their google account they can select add to library and they can now add it to their library of favorites or things they're reading now or things to read or they can even go in and create an entirely new shelf over here on the left hand side. I'm going to add this one to my favorites and click done and now that's in my bookshelf. Now the last thing that students should know about Google Books is that even if they are looking for preview books, they can still often do a search within the preview of those books. So let's go back here and say anytime, and maybe we'll pick this book here, The War of 1812, A Forgotten Conflict, Bicentennial Edition. Well, when they click on that book, they can look at the preview, but they can also do a search inside the book. And they'll see that there are 33 results for New Orleans inside this book. 
Now, when they close that out, this book is only available as a preview. They can only preview those 51 pages. They can still add it to the library. When they click on Get the Book, one of the things that they'll see here are links to buy the print edition, but further down, they'll find a list of libraries in their area that have that book listed in their library. So even if the book is a preview, this is still a helpful tool for students to locate and search within the book before they go and track it down at a library near them or purchase a copy of it. So those are five things that students should know how to do with Google Books. Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I'm going to show you five features of Google Scholar that students should know how to use. Let's go ahead and take a look at Google Scholar here. And let's say I'm going to do a search for information about digital portfolios in education, something I was actually researching not that long ago. And the first thing that students should know is how to identify the access level for the articles, because not every article in Google Scholar is available to read for free in its entirety. For example, if we click on this first one and open it in a new tab, we'll see that we can read it a little abstract of it, but we can't actually read the entire article for free. We'll see if we click on the get access here, it wants us to pay $45 to download that article and we only get it for 48 hours. So a quick little tip for students is to look for things on the right hand side that have a PDF label next to them, because those are things that they'll be able to access in their entirety for free. For example here, let's take a look at developing digital portfolios for childhood education research reports. Let's just do a quick right click on that one. And we'll see that opens up the entire 289 page PDF that we can then read through. And quick little tip, students should also know to use control F to search within the PDF itself for any keywords they might want to identify like digital. In this case, there's 574 references to the word digital within this 289 page PDF. So that's the first thing you need to know is how to quickly identify the access level. Now, Next little feature, let's say that they have accessed this PDF and they've found it really useful and they're going to use it in their research report. Well, they wanna cite the work. So click on the little cite button and they'll quickly find citation information in MLA, APA, Chicago, Harvard, Vancouver style. And you can see down here, some quick links to additional tools like RefWorks and BibTeX. Now, if my students are doing some research and they find this is useful, but they want to come back to it later, well, guess what? They can star it and save it right in their libraries of interesting works from Google Scholar that they have saved. Now, of course, they could also have just bookmarked this using Google Keep or OneNote or whatever their favorite bookmarking tool is, but here they get to save it right in their library by again, just clicking on that little star. Now, while we're still down here, let's take a look at this cited by and related articles. So if we click on cited by, this will take students to a list of all the other works in Google Scholar that cited the one that I am using. So I've just looked at this one and I, saved it, I'm going to cite it in my research. I wanna see who else is citing it in their work. Well, I just clicked on that cited by 42 others. And there's that list of all of the other articles that reference the work that I'm also referencing. And once again, we see a bunch of PDFs. We can just right click on that, open that up in a new tab and look at that. PDF, in this case, a 24-page PDF. 
Now, we also have this option here for related articles that students should never overlook. And we'll see a long list there of related articles. Now, in this case, my results are in Norwegian. So let's make sure we translate it into English. And finally, the fifth thing that students should know about in Google Scholar is the option to refine their search according to date. You can see the default options here of since 2021, since 2020, and 2017. But let's do a custom range. If we click on custom range, we can say, I want things that were just published between the years of 2010 and 2021. I don't want anything older than 2010. And so let's now refine our search and there we have it. So those are five features of Google Scholar that students should know how to use. Here's.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hi, this is Richard Byrne. In this video, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite resources for helping students look at development data around the world. And that's through the Google Public Data Explorer. You can find it here at google.com slash public data slash directory. And we can go in and choose a data set provider. Uh, let's go to the World Bank and look at development indicators. And now we can take a look at any subset and so let's go into uh, education and let's look at completion rate and then we'll take a look at a region let's say we want to do Europe and Central Asia we can take a look even further at more data sets down here let's say gender male education level let's say primary and now we have our chart created for us. If we want to compare, we have a new chart there. And so now we have our new graph and we can change the display format. You'll see the data update right here at the bottom. You see here we have a map of this information and we have another graph. So that's how you can use the Google Public Data Explorer. Again, it's a nice way for students to visualize lots of data in map and graph format. Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I want to show you a relatively new search tool from Google called the Data Set Search. Now to find this, you'll go to toolbox.google.com slash dataset search. It's a relatively new search tool, still in beta, and hopefully in the future, Google changes that URL to something a little shorter. Let's see how this works. Let's say I'm looking for data about earthquakes. Now Google is going to make some suggestions for me, or I can just hit enter and I'll find even more data sets related to earthquakes. Now, just for example, let's take the first result on the page and we'll see the sources of the data, who's provided the data set, the time period covered, in this case the area covered, and we can read a description about the data set. Now if I want to go directly to that data set, let's click on the link provided here. And in this case, it took us to the NOAA page that hosts the data. And we'll see in this case, our data is actually a KML file. We often think of data, or when we hear data, we think of Excel spreadsheets or CSV files. But in this case, we have a Google Earth file that we can now download and look at the information within that file. I want to show you another example here as we're going through. Let's take a look at the Hawaii earthquake data. And again, we'll see a description 
This is an archive of vector data sets collected in response to the Hawaii earthquake of 2010. And there's a link for more information. And we can click on that link. And when this link opens, we'll see a variety of zip files that contain those vector graphics. And of course, you'll often find plenty of places that provide CSV and Excel type of data sets. And in this case here, we'll see the source, who provided the data, and we also see the time period for the data collection, context, and content. If I go to that data set and let that open, we'll see again this source. We'll see that data set in a CSV and we have options up here to download that CSV as well. So that's a short overview of Google's new data set search. Hi, I'm Richard Byrne. In this video, I want to give you a short overview of a tool from Google that could be helpful when teaching your students about the importance of context when reading articles online. And this is called the Google Fact Check Explorer. And here's a brief overview of how it works. You can go in and search for a term, a topic, a name, and it will return a list of articles with a little bit of information about their accuracy. Now you can use this for serious topics, like perhaps you want to search for Brexit. And you'll see here that as we scroll down to this one here, our full fact rating, this is not quite true. And it has a little more information about that. And you can then go ahead and click on the original source. And you can see it right there. And you can go through here and click for more things from full fact, from the fact checker. Now, you can also use this for lighter topics, like perhaps baseball. And you can see here some articles about baseball and something that Joe Biden may have said. And you can see here it's missing context is the rating there. And down here you see this next one, your fact check rating is false. And again, you can click through to that article and you'll see more down here like this one about did PETA really ask Major League Baseball to rename the bullpen to Arm Barn? Then yes, it actually did. Now you can explore all the fact checking and fact checkers by going to the About tab up here, which will give you all the information about how this tool actually works and how the fact checking is submitted. So it's called Fact Check Explorer. You can find it with the link that I have right down below. As always, for more things like this, please check out freetechforteachers.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel.